Hello and welcome to Operation Commanding Force. I'm Camille Salzar Hadaway, and there is no better way to kick off the first season of Year 8 of Rainbow Six Siege than to be here with all of you. Whether you're here watching the best teams in the world compete in the Sixth Invitational, or at home excited to learn what's next, this is the place to be. In Operation Commanding Force, all eyes are on Viper Strike, the squad led by Hubana, who will be welcoming a new operator this season. To tell us more, please welcome Creative Director Alexander Karpazes. Year 8 Season 1 Commanding Force starts off with us seeing Brava, our saboteur from Brazil. She'll be joining Viper Strike, led by Habana, and is made up of the experts who have every tool at their disposal to get the job done. They're essentially the elite Swiss Army knives who can jump into any operation and execute at the highest possible level. This squad is also being joined by Red Hammer, which was introduced earlier, being led by Thermite. This is the squad of force and destruction, and with Viper Strike and Red Hammer joining the fold, we've introduced all of our squads that are making up Rainbow Six today. On top of this, we have a lot of exciting stuff to share. We've got balancing changes that reinforce the tacticality of our game and the gameplay that you can expect. We are constantly reinforcing the game with anti-cheat, and you'll see even more player protection coming down the line. And finally, newcomer rewards means newcomers jumping into Siege for the first time, experience the vocabulary of the game and get rewarded for it, and veterans of the game as well will have rewards. All of this and more, our team's been working very hard and they're excited to share with you everything that they've been working on today. The Viper Strike faction is stepping onto the stage with Brava, a new Brazilian attacker who pilots the Kludge drone, a dastardly device capable of hacking Defender electronics and either destroying them from a distance or changing their allegiance entirely. Imagine a Defender triggering a Capkin trap or getting slowed by Malusi's Banshee device. Imagine an attacker causing chaos with an on-site maestro turret in a post-plant situation. This is the world that Brava is bringing to you, and it's coming soon. Defenders will need to be on the lookout this season as Brava and her gadget seek to give them a taste of their own medicine. We're gonna dive into the design of Brava with concept artist Sunshine Kim, then get the details of what makes Brava's drone unique from director of gameplay design Jeremy Carval and game designer Mathieu Lacombe. Brava is a natural born leader and an expert in advanced technologies. She really values her family, hometown, and her heritage. You can see that she always wears the capybara patch which represents her hometown around her strap as if it's part of her. She's a strong leader with years of experiences just like her cousin Capitao, but she's not an intimidating and strict leader unlike her cousin Capitao. They're alike, but they're different in many ways. We wanted her outgoing and lively personality to be really reflected in her visual design. But instead of approaching usual traditional way with heavy gear setup and multiple layers, we simplified it. Having that minimalistic gear setup, but still looking professional and combat ready was the main challenge. When we started to work on Brava's device, we were looking for technology that could disrupt electronics in a distance. So we dig into the fantasy of anti-drone rifles. These rifles are powerful weapons that can break the connection and the control of drones. We really like the feeling and the look of this, so we wanted to make our own version of it. Once we were happy with our version, we scaled it down, mounted it on a turret, and we put this turret on top of these four wheels drones to create this little tank. When you are controlling the drone, you will see this dedicated interface with a ton of little elements that will be used as important feedbacks. We even put the cannon on the side to really give the feeling that you are inside the machine. And finally, we've designed this new overlay that will show on different occasions when the hack is performed. 
Bravo's gadget is the Clutch Drone. It's a new observation tool that we are bringing to the attacking team. It's an observation tool that focuses on stealing and overeating defender gadgets. It's a drone, so similar to what we have with Twitch. You can move around, drive with it, and you can also shoot. When you shoot at a electronic device, you can steal them from the defender team. Our experienced players will be able to do a lot of crazy things with this. You can steal a Capkin Trap, you can steal a Yokai Drones, all of those defender gadgets that you can turn against them. So obviously there's a lot of possibilities and it's sky is the limit here. For newer players, well, it's a safe way to explore new maps, get to know interactions between some gadgets. It's an observation tool, you gather knowledge, you gather intel, it's always going to be good. Brava brings two primary uh, weapons. We have the Para 308 and the Cam RS. We have the Assault Rifle. It's high damage, low rate of fire, but you know how it works. We have the DMR as the other option. If you want line of sight, more destruction, this is the one you want. For the secondary weapons, we have the Super Shorty and the USB 40. You know the deal there. We have a secondary shotgun for utility. We can create some rotation holes for drones. You can slip by the defenses with this. Or you have the USB 40, which is a reliable pistol. If you want to move fast, you want to catch up to your team, that's the one you want to use. For generic gadgets, we have the claymores and the small grenades. The claymore, obviously, you're going to spend a lot of time hunting down defender utilities, but we want to make sure that you're safe. So you will be able to use the claymore for this one. Or we have the small grenade. The small grenade is the one that creates a lot of noise, that draws a lot of attention. This means that you can slip by a clutch drone and maybe steal something. Like, that's a window of opportunity for you. We have a three speed and one armor attacker here. It's mostly so you use the speed to catch up to your team. You're going to spend a lot of time on your clutch drones and we want to make sure that you're always relevant during the round. So we gave you the best speed that we have. The first synergy that we can see is IQ. You have this ability to track all of the electronic devices and it turns out that Brava can hunt and steal those. So you want IQ to scout ahead and Brava to execute on them. And one of the things that we really like is tag teams. And here we are proposing Brava and IQ. Thatchers and the operator that have access to the generic uh, EMP grenade can allow the clutch drone to move forward if there's a pest or a mute jammer in the doorway. And don't worry, if you disable a gadget and you try to convert it, it will still work. Some of our maps have these critical important walls to open. A Centaur might, might have issues because there's electricity or mute jammers on those walls. You can send the clutch drone to shoot those gadgets and remove them, but there's also creative ways of doing it. You can steal a maestro, use the maestro to deny those devices. That's the kind of things that you will learn about Brava, and that's why it's exciting. So this is a great way to counter Brava. Either you can spot Brava when she's droning, well, she's vulnerable, and you can spot the clutch drone coming in to steal your gadgets. Muzzy is an interesting counter here. We have a two-way relationship. You can steal the pest and do all of the crazy things that you can think of. But the pest can also steal the clutch drone and then from there you can steal claymore, steal air jabs, retake some drones. There's a lot of possibility here. So it's really a counter and counter synergy. The clutch drone is an observation tool. It navigates on the floor. The, the way that we know to counter this is good old mute. You place jammers, you passively deny the entry to the bomb site. You just have to be careful and place them in ways that she can't shoot them. The clutch drone can steal the jammer, and then it's going to disable defender gadgets. Vigil's gadgets allows them to be close to drones, so obviously the clutch drone will not be able to see Vigil, which means that he can jump on your drone and destroy it. I think our experienced players will be able to make Bravo shine the most when they re-pick into this operator. When you notice that there's Capcan, Milusi, Aruni, Maestro, all of those defender that brings high-valued gadgets, well, you want to steal them. That's when experienced player will make Bravo shine. Our next updates are focused on the team's ongoing efforts to ensure that Rainbow Six Siege is fair and balanced for all players. The use of mouse and keyboard on console is a disruptive problem, and this season we're putting a new solution in place to tackle this issue. Gameplay programming team lead Jan Stalaka is here to share the details. So on Siege, we have a problem where a lot of players are using these little widgets 
called input spoofing devices, and they allow you to play with a keyboard and mouse on console. Now, along with toxicity and cheating, this is one of the biggest complaints that we get from our community. And we heard you, we agree. It feels really unfair to play against other players when you have such a disadvantage. So this is a problem that all console shooters have, especially the competitive ones. And there hasn't really been a reliable solution for this yet. In fact, the devices they're using are specifically designed to be undetectable. We wanted to build our own system that would sniff out mouse and keyboard players on console so that we could build a better picture of exactly who is using these devices. And we called that system Mousetrap. We have been really quiet about it, but actually it's been running in the background in shadow mode for several seasons. We've been gathering data and analyzing the results, and now we have a much better picture. We know exactly which players are spoofing, when they were spoofing. We also know that at the highest ranks, spoofers become much more common, where they have the biggest advantage and the most to gain. It would have been really easy for us just to ban all those players, but we want to try something a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and remove the advantage that they get from using one of these input spoofing devices. Starting in Season 8, Year 1.2, when we detect you spoofing, we're going to start adding extra latency to your inputs. It's going to start out really unnoticeable, but it's going to ramp up over several matches, and it will definitely be noticeable. Controller players will find that their disadvantage against mouse and keyboard players will be much reduced. To remove the penalty, simply unplug your spoofing adapter and continue playing on controller. After a few matches, the latency will be reduced and you'll be back to normal. We've worked really closely with our accessibility group here at Ubisoft to make sure that we take the needs of disabled players into account. We have designed the feature so that disabled players who use adaptive technology to access the game should not be affected by this penalty. However, if you are a disabled player and you feel like you've been unfairly penalized, there will be a QR code in the game that you can use to contact us. We will then investigate and maybe we can use your feedback to improve our system. So additionally, we will be updating our code of conduct for all players to say that using external devices to gain an advantage is not permitted. I want to mention that this is an experimental solution. Nobody in the industry has solved this problem yet. We are trying something new, but it's not the final iteration. We intend to keep monitoring the data to update our detection system and to continue to tune the penalties. It's an evolving situation. We are committed to continuing to work on it to improve the fairness of Siege. Mousetrap will be coming Year 8, Season 1.2. In the same vein, Operation Commanding Force is continuing to bolster our anti-toxicity measures. To tell us more, here's Player Protection and Game Security Director Emmanuel Larive. I'm very glad to announce that we will perform a new update toward the reputation penalty. This new update will be looking at everybody that is doing some disruption at the voice chat level. It is really important because we're seeing case of misconduct, hateful message, we want to reduce that. Players being detected by this new system will be muted by default to others. So the people that still want to hear them will be able to unmute them. The goal of this new initiative is to reduce the impact of the top offender on other players. We also want to reduce the case of misconduct and hateful message that you are facing. At the start, we will be only looking at the top offender, so a small population of players. They will be receiving a set of warnings, and when the penalty will be applied, it will last several matches. Later down the road, of course, we will continue to monitor the system, but also to expand it to everybody. In Siege, every decision counts. Starting this season, reloading will be more tactical than ever. Associate Game Director Joshua Mills reveals details about the reload rework, and game designer Robert Cole has some news about a balancing update for Zero. The issue with the current reload system in Siege is that it doesn't reflect the reality that most players are perceiving, which is if someone's reloading, 
they are non-lethal, and I have opportunity to push that fight. In the live build of Siege right now, if you initiate a reload action, you can cancel it at any time. What that means is the magazine has been removed from the weapon, and somebody starts pushing you, and you cancel that animation, and the magazine pops back in the weapon, and as long as it had ammunition, your weapon is again lethal. With Operation Commanding Force, you will no longer get the benefits of reload canceling. And what I mean by that is once the magazine has cleared the weapon, it will not magically pop back in the weapon if you cancel that animation. In fact, it'll drop and then you'll have no magazine in your weapon. But if you had a little bit of ammunition left in your magazine, you'll still have one in the chamber. And at the end of the day, it only takes one. Ultimately, the objective here is consistency with the tactics and strategy of Siege. Which means if you perform an action in Siege, it has consequences and is purposeful. When a player initiates a reload action, you're committed to it. The objectives here are to enhance our teamwork, so if I have to reload, my friend's gonna cover me, and to make use of the loadout that players already have, which is to use their secondary weapon if needed. Ultimately, it realigns our players' expectations with the game reality. So players, when they know somebody's reloading, expect that they have an opportunity and an advantage in that situation. Right now, the game doesn't actually support that. This is one of those updates that is actually affecting our core mechanics of the game. It's an important thing to be very careful when we make those changes, but we know this is the direction we want to go in to bring Siege to be more tactical, more purposeful, and more strategic than ever before. Zero is not in a bad spot right now, but it's true that his gadget can be a tricky one to use, as it's getting destroyed most of the times before being even used, mainly due to the sound it makes. We are changing the Argus camera so that it will no longer auto-deploy to the other side of the wall once being attached. Zero will now need to manually perform the perforation from inside the camera. And additionally, any teammates can swap either side of the camera but not perform the perforation. With these changes, we want the Argus camera to be a much more powerful intel tool, as well as being much more collaborative and improve the options and survivability of the gadget. We believe that these changes will make the gadget much more interesting and bring a new layer of strategy to Zero. In year seven, we did a big update to our attachments and to our recoil system. The goal here was to enhance the player choice, give you more options to play the way you want to and make the loadouts you want to use. Looking into the compensator and the muzzle brake is the same philosophy. We're just bringing those in line with some of the changes we started in year seven. For the muzzle brake, we're going from 45% up to 50%. For the compensator, we're making an adjustment from 15% to 35%. One great feature that was introduced in year seven is the shooting range, and I highly recommend you go into there and test all this stuff out to find the perfect kit for yourself. As always, with any balancing change or any update we do, we will be listening and monitoring the community feedback and continuing to find ways to empower you, the player, to live out the fantasy of being that elite operator. You're gonna notice some cool changes around the play section of the menu when Operation Commanding Force is in full force. And senior UX designer Cecilia Pasquale is here to give you a sneak peek. We are introducing three categories that will contain our existing and new playlists. The categories are competitive, quick play and training. We are going to also introduce a dynamic button for each of those categories and it's going to be right below the tile and it's going to allow our players to directly access their last played playlists inside that category. For those playlists, for example, as Quick Match, that have different game modes to select, to match make with, we are going to add a settings button right below the tile that allows our players to select the game modes directly from there instead of having to go through the global settings button. For the future, we aim to further improve the menu navigation, but also we can't wait to hear your feedback about our latest improvements. This feature is directed to our PC players and it's an access point in the home page of the game that notifies when a test server is available. Upon clicking on the button, the game session will be closed and the test server will be automatically started. For those players that still don't have the test server installed, they can access this button and directly download it, meanwhile still playing the game. The main goal of this feature is to give players the ability to check the availability of the test server in the home page of the game. By giving a faster access and more visibility of our test server, we hope that more players will be interested in downloading and test our new features. Last season, we rolled out the revamped Battle Pass to give you more control and flexibility over the new gear you unlock. Now, 
We're introducing a new spin on Bravo Packs aimed to give you even more choice when it comes to earning cosmetics. Business Strategy Director Mohammed Ben Hanada will break down just how this works. So last year we introduced the Bravo Packs. This feature was actually really liked by our community. What we want to do this year is actually give you even more choice as to which reward you unlock from the Bravo Packs. So for the players that finish the 100 tiers of the Battle Pass, we're giving you what we call the Bravo Pack Tickets. This will actually give you the opportunity to browse all of the rewards from the Bravo Packs and choose the one that you want to unlock. We launched the new Battle Pass last season. We've had a lot of feedback from the community around the UI and the UX of the feature. So looking forward into the next seasons, we're going to be focusing on improving this experience on the UX and UI side. So stay tuned for this. The best moments in Siege are when a plan comes together. But for this to happen, everyone on the team needs to be on the same page, which could be tough to do when you're first starting out. Don't worry, we got you. Our new beginner challenges will make it easier than ever to understand the strategies of Siege and will even earn you some nice rewards too. Associate Game Director Christopher Budgen is here to explain it all. Siege is a highly tactical game with a lot of different strategies, depending on the operators, the maps, and the interactions of the gadgets. We want to support new players on their Siege journey by adding the tools that allows them to learn how to play Siege and how to perform at their best in PvP. In Operation Commanding Force, we're introducing the Beginner Challenges. Beginner Challenges are a new progression tool which allows new players to progress and learn about the different facets of Siege. They can do this by every match that they play, they're actually progressing in these new challenges which are created into groups that we like to call Operator Specialties. Operator Specialties are a great way for our current players to teach their friends how to play Siege. For example, you could talk about Habana as a Breacher, and this is how we're going to group the Beginner Challenges. Every time a newcomer plays a match, they'll be progressing their Beginner Challenges. They'll be able to see which operator specialty they've been progressing, and as they do so, they'll unlock different rewards such as Renown, Boosters, or Newcomer Packs. Additionally, players can unlock operators of that specialty. So for example, if you're playing as a Breach Operator and doing well, you're progressing those challenges and you'll unlock another Breach Operator to play as. It will be a great motivator for new players to be able to progress towards a specific operator, all while learning what that operator does within the game. All operators within Siege will now have an operator specialty assigned to them. You'll be able to refer to that when playing with other players such as, we already have a Breacher, or can somebody bring an Intel operator? This is a great way to introduce your friends to Siege because now they'll be able to use the language of Siege to make the choices about which operator to play. All players will have access to beginner challenges. For new players, it will replace the Battle Pass tile on the home menu. Our current players will be able to find it in the play menu. By giving new players a progression tool that's been specifically designed for them, we're able to reward players with items they can use immediately. This is the first time we're unlocking the ability to play to unlock a specific operator within Siege. Players will be informed how they're playing and be able to identify the type of role that they perform best within. And finally, you could play Operation Commanding Force on the Season Test Server next week. You could put your sabotage skills to the test with Brava and her gadget. Have fun exploring the new features and be sure to share your feedback on r 6 Fix. I'm Camille Salzar-Hadaway and this is Year 8. The fun is just getting started.